Okay, guys. Good Mark Scott here, and um, today I'm going to tackle a suggestion by one of my um, um, favorite watchers on my channel, Aimless, who asks me to start a beginner's guide. So I've put some thoughts together, and I'm going to attempt to do so. at least as best as I can, so um, let's get started. Well, what, first of all, you've got to think, why am I trying to buy this item? Usually I'm going after Goodwill boxes, so before I bid, I know why I, I'm trying to buy it. And for me, that there's kind of like five categories of like mental categories that I put in my head when I look at a piece of silver plate. So I'll start from the begin from like I guess the most desirable reasons. Um, obviously it's to make extra cash, right? Obviously, I'm, I'm in the business to flip um, this stuff. Uh, that's not the only reason. I, I do like I do like this stuff and I do like the history, but in my head there's you gotta have a reason. Like, why is this piece going to sell for more than I paid for, or why do I want to own this in my own personal collection? In the top of the hierarchy are, are obviously, well to me, high value, high value, high end antiques. That's what I personally like more. Some of the patterns of, of more modern pieces, but, but still, still like old pieces. They're not like, they're not new. I mean, most of these pieces are were made pre-70s. The, uh, the plating, the, the plating business as a whole kind of died out and started having its, like, death, death rattles in the 60s and they kept they kept losing market share to other other items, other other companies, cheaper imports from China and, and that kind of thing kind of decimated American manufacturing for house goods like like silver plate and we've we've never recovered, obviously. You all know this. But um I start and I'm most interested in really, really old stuff that it doesn't it doesn't necessarily compare to um, what companies were pumping out in like the 60s and 50s, 40s kind of like experimental silver plate and let me sh guys, let me show you some of those pieces I consider um, high quality antiques. So I'm going to show you all my personal collection. These are pieces that, that I'm keeping for myself and, and I don't I don't usually keep pieces for myself because I don't find that many things that, that really like speak to me. But also, I, I'm trying not to to um, to do so because I don't have a really have anywhere to display it, anything, and I'm still trying to grow. So I, usually, I, I like to sell my things. But um, I am a huge fan of. And there's a couple companies to be on the lookout when you're looking for antique silver 
but marriage in Britannia, Britannia is, is one of them. And look at this, this guy's, um, it just doesn't look like anything that they make anymore. Um, Another, another piece of Mer Meriden Britannia. It, it's in good shape. Um, these are like, I consider these the crown jewel of, of my collection, really. And I want to keep and, and keep building Meriden Britannia. Especially this, this old stuff. And, and it's not that valuable right now. Um, maybe you can look for, find a buyer for, for this stuff. Maybe 75 bucks or a seller. Maybe like say five two hundred dollars a piece I think it should be way, worth way more but um, you got Meriden Britannia you got Simpson Mill Hall Miller this I think this piece is is Simpson Hall Miller it's a uh, Rogers and bro one of the multiple Rogers uh, companies Rogers and bro is probably one of the first ones butter dish. It's very cool. I think this is Simpson Hall and Miller. Oh. Unfortunately, somebody scratched the hell out of the hallmark here. Or the, the stamp. I don't know why anybody would have done that. It says it's, it was made in New York. So, we can look up. Hmm. Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, oh, here's another Merit in Britannia. Anyway, how do you identify things like this? Often, well, obviously it, it's how it looks right, but um, there are some other clues that'll that'll tell you that you're looking at vintage, vintage antique silver plate, and that's by a couple um, a couple markings on the bottom. You're looking for anything that says quadruple plate, or you're looking for treble plate. Those are the big ones. Uh, quadruple plate and treble plate, they stopped using those markings uh, fairly early on in the uh, plating um, processes. I don't know why though they those markings fell out of favor, but they just did. So if anything you can find is, is um, marked quadruple plate or uh, treble plate it's that's great to um to go ahead and um give it a chance of course not everything is is super valuable as a quadruple plate but it, it's more likely to be antique it's, it's pretty um what was this Hartford Sterling Co. Quadruple Plated. You just, you can kind of tell that it's thicker and heavier pieces. Not always, but you can tell that people, um, these early platers used fairly large amounts of silver on their pieces, and they also used heftier, um, thicker um, base metals. Oh, here's, here's Barker and Ellis. Uh, one of my favorite, um, one of the, the most valuable uh, companies of British silver plate. But anyway, just just learn all these, um, these the makers of old stuff, because they don't, a lot of them don't exist anymore. Like Meriden Britannia merged with a bunch of other companies. A lot of these older companies merged to make um, companies that like International Silver Company 
um, Reed and Barton. There were there were a lot of mergers back in the day. So if you can know which companies existed back then, then um, good chance that you can you can pick out their um, their products. Crosby Silver Company, one of them. Um, Homan, Homan um, Manufacturing Company. Um, here's, I think this is Forbes. I don't know when Forbes stopped being being around, but they make they made some old stuff too. You just you just learn this stuff as you um, do research. Of course, it's like everything else. The more research you do on a subject, the better you become. So, it's not like you can just cheat your way into becoming an expert in anything really so that's that's it for um vintage silver plate and here's my my little collection of it if i hoarded every piece of vintage silver plate i i could never first of all i wouldn't break even and second of all i wouldn't have anywhere to to display it so um second thing I'm looking for is sterling silver in the boxes. It's another category I'm looking for when I'm doing this and normally I can expect a certain amount of silver plate if I buy it in bulk but I also know how to um, target it. It, it looks it looks di like similar to some of the silver plated stuff like there's some times that silver plate will trick me in making me think it's sterling but there's also times where I, I can see silver plate. I know it, it's never sterling. Like that. See this? That, um, that coloration right here? That's, that's base metal, guys. That's base metal. You, base metals kind of have this, this shine or um, this different way of tarnishing. This is not a not a great um, example of, of this, but you can also try to find when when you're looking for um, sterling. Look at the piece and see if it, if there's any oxidation of the base metals. So, see that it's copper. You know that this this is made of copper as a base metal, and the, the silver plate kind of worn through here, showing the green. So I look at at the pictures and they'll give you clues. The more you do it, the more you you um can can learn what what's um what's silver plate and what isn't. Like even the the forms of, of things. Like um I don't think they they ever made any anything so so bulky out of out of sterling. Um sterling is usually smaller. It's it's thinner. Yeah, they usually try to to use less silver and and get and then more. One more um, one more note about antique silver plate. You want to look for not only the the age of the item, but what it is also. Obviously, if you can find some some things that were popular in the Victorian era. And that's still popular just um, because it has has fans from the, that day and age. You can you can do pretty well, and that that means things that don't don't exist in in a household. Like we, they used to have bed warmers, or they used to have chamber pots, or uh, tobacco boxes. Well, we still have tobacco boxes, but, but that's collectible, not just because of, of the company and the history behind it, but because it has, it's collectible, not just for the silver, but because it also has like a, a fan base, so it's like an independent fan base, like the tobacco memorabilia um, enthusiasts, they're, they're a very large group, and so if you can find a 
a tobacco box or or some or the like or you can find like a pickle caster and I don't have one with me guys I've sold my pickle casters and I usually do pretty I always do pretty really well actually here's here's a bridal basket I don't know why bridal baskets don't sell but they they simply don't sell as, as well as I would think they do because they're they're very beautiful don't, people don't seem to want to collect them as much or maybe if they do but there's just so many on the market that, that it's hard for uh, for these these pieces to to really command a lot of cash but um yeah what I was saying um collectors of a certain thing and I also don't have any on me but railroad people are go nuts if you can find some some pieces of um of silver plate that was used on a railroad back in the day I found a, f a few before, and I made good profit on them. They're they're there. They're out there. They're rare, though. Hotels as well. Hotel wear, and oftentimes hotel wear is very sturdy, like it's it's uh, silver soldered, as oftentimes for hotel wear. Cushion router. I really like this piece. This is kind of like silver soldered. You can tell silver soldered stuff because it's very, very dirty. It's built to last, so so they would have um, used that kind of stuff in hotels or hospitals, um, possibly cafeterias, in um, in colleges or um, Railroad pieces are often silver soldered as well, so be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. Um, oh yeah, salt cellars. We don't have salt cellars anymore. Do you find a nice looking salt cellar? Uh, I don't have one of those. Look it up if you all want to. People used to have little little bowls, little spoons, in order to um, serve salt. It's crazy. Honorable mentions that I didn't mention in earlier, but um, realized it later when I thought more are um, napkin rings. Napkin rings are big. If you can find vintage napkin rings, cha-ching. Soup tureens are highly collectible as well. And some of them are very, very elaborate and ornate. I haven't even mentioned Sheffield, old Sheffield plate, and the more I'm honest, guys, old Sheffield plate is very difficult to um, identify. So if I found any, I don't even know. And that you could do a, a whole video on on old Sheffield plate and um, and a bunch of research on it. But basically, the gist of old Sheffield plate is that the it was um the method that um, silversmiths had used before we had electroplating. And what they would do was take think of like um silver. Um, rolled into thin, um, thin uh, layers, and it's basically you could think of it like a a silver sandwich with um, the silver on the outside and like copper on the inside, and then they would roll it into sheets and make like trays and whatnot with it, with that, and it's very difficult to identify. There are some clues. Uh, oftentimes they didn't mark old Sheffield plate, and sometimes you can see a seam running through it. But it's it's um, quite difficult because sometimes you don't see that seam, and 
other times if you have a piece that say the um the hallmark rubbed away or whatever or kind of like um fell off because the the plating worn thin on that part you'd never realize it you'd think maybe that you have old sheffield plate or maybe it's all very confusing but if you could identify old Sheffield plate or could, or if you think you you can find it, maybe you can bring it to an antique dealer and they might be able to help. But yeah, that's just another thing to to um to um look out for since this is a beginner's guide, and that's it. and um. Uh, um, the, um, the amount of detail those, uh, old Victorian people, um, used for dining. Nothing exists like that anymore, but, okay, so, that's it for antiques. Be on the lookout for that. Um, be on the lookout for sterling. Like I said, um, I also have videos where I post my sterling finds and how to look for them, so... Go ahead and do that. Um, now comes the next tier of um, of um, silver plate, and I like this one because it's the most it's it's um well well lucrative, but also I don't mind getting rid of it because I don't really need it in my life. But uh, we're talking about silver, a uh, modern, sort of modern silver plate, but, um, more li in line with what your grandma used to have, as opposed to what your great-grandmother would have even had. Your great-grandma would have had this stuff, but your grandma might, might have had stuff like this, like this a vegetable dish made by one of the big big um silver plate manufacturers during the um like the night the uh, 20th century um recognize all these companies because they're very they made the ver vast bulk of uh american silver plate forum consumers some of those companies are Gorham, Oneida, Reed and Barton, F. B. Rogers, W. M. Rogers, International Silver Company. Half of my finds are like Oneida or Reed and Barton, Gorham, these companies. You don't, yeah. Once once they kind of like, um, once all these hundreds of firms kind of like contracted into a, a, like a half dozen companies in the United States, they, they were able to pump a, a bunch of product out and a lot of it still exists. This is what you find in, in the vast majority of, um, of homes in America and the, um, the pro productivity of these these firms are, are why this stuff there's so much of it out there and why it's still so cheap kind of gives it gives a silver plate the reputation of being very plentiful and not very valuable um, so like something like this It's a WMA -E Rogers Arbor is the pattern for that. Now, people do collect certain patterns, and those patterns go for a lot, but there's not that many that do so. And a lot of the time, you'll be able to find these these uh, patterns for 
like medium value. So you'll do okay. Here, here's international silver. Countess. You'll do okay if you can get this stuff cheap, but there's usually a lot on the market and the market for silver plate in general is not that strong. So you can probably sell this for like 20 bucks, maybe, but you'll have to sit on it for a while until someone bites. It's the vast bulk of why I have so much in my inventory. And this is kind of like starting to bleed into the other... Obviously, people... There are some people who, who will collect certain patterns in certain companies. So... But they have a lot to choose from. And there are not that many people who collect silver plate. But then you're kind of starting to bleed into functional silver plate. Like this is stuff that people would still use if they needed to um, like entertain in their house or they wanted to own a teapot, tea set or they wanted to use a bowl or and I'm not even going into flatware but everybody needs to use flatware right? Or They'll need to use a trevet for their hot food, or they'll need to use a tray or a plate in order to, to eat, or they'll need to use a cup or wine glass. I got, like, wine glasses here. Candle holders, if they want a candle holder. Um, you know, it's functional. But the problem with, with silver plate that's purchased solely because it's functional is that you're competing with everybody else who's trying to sell something to somebody that's functional like you're not going after the you know we got some trays over here and these are like this is also what i'm talking about functional silver plate this is like a buffet server or casserole casserole server. You have a casserole dish right here. Pyrex or something. It's kind of like a liner for it. But you are competing with so many people selling functional silver. Um, not just functional silver plate, but functional porcelain, functional china, functional steel, functional stainless steel. You know, people want, like to buy in stainless steel bowls. That's in every Walmart. If you, if somebody's looking for a stainless steel bowl or a bowl in general, I got bowls. I have bowls. Really, I do. But someone might pay me five dollars for this bowl, maybe. I've never actually sold a bowl for five dollars because one, I have to charge like nine dollars to ship it to you. I can't sell a bowl for nine for five dollars and free shipping, but Amazon might do that for you. So how the hell am I gonna compete with Amazon? So the vast bulk of this stuff, although it's although it's not worthless <coughs> It's effectively worthless to me in my current condition. So, and if you start to accumulate this stuff, that might be the same case for you as well. Unless you had a avenue to get rid of it. On the other hand, that's that was that's what makes the bulk of your boxes. This kind of stuff makes the bulk of your boxes: <coughs> bowls, plates, trays. These are flower frogs or candle holders. See if this still has functional value. Good luck getting rid of it though. I find it very difficult. Now well, let's talk about stuff that you want to stay away from. 
even though this stuff is not necessarily easy to um, to sell online at, at a decent profit or markup, you could probably still get rid of this stuff at like if you owned a secondhand store or something. But also, one day I, I think that the silver will be profitably scrapped. So I don't want to just get rid of all these things because I think that they'll still be valuable and they'll still they'll still be keeping up with in inflation as functional pieces. But there are some things that you just don't want to find at all. Um, mm, the vast majority of of um, a very new silver plate is often things you don't want to um, own at all. You don't want to go after this stuff. Anything practically with like a sticker that says tarnish resistant or a sticker that says made in China, a sticker that says in, made in India. India has one Indian silver plate has like one um exception to that rule and that's Leonard Leonard is often made in India and it is collectible to certain people they do did make some very nice Leonard pieces so other than that um, modern modern silver plate made in like India or China Indonesia you don't find that much in, made in Indonesia you mostly find modern pieces made in China they're made very flimsy and um, oftentimes they're made on stainless steel or the silver plate is very, very thin. The, the, the silver plate is very thin on this. It'll get scratched up. Scratches show up so easily on, on the new stuff. It's just an inferior product, really. Look at this. I pull, pulled this out to show you all what stainless steel looks like when it's silver plated. It rusts up. Who the hell is going to want to buy this? And to me, as somebody who sees something as also um, a category of stuff to go after is stuff I can scrap in the future, this, uh, this serves absolutely no purpose to me whatsoever. <laughs> it's not funct It's functional, but no one will want it. Rusting up, dude. Stay away from stainless, um, from silver plated steel. Stay away from modern pieces. Stay away from the stuff that's tarnish resistant. It's just ugly. Alright, so that is it for that. Um, oh, where do you find this kind of. Oh, how do you know? how much to try to sell it for or how do you identify the companies or the hallmarks you go to like just google dude 925 there's a good website called 925-1000.com or uh, silvercollection.it these are amazing resources for um, hallmarks if you find one that you want to identify the company and they also have good forums of, um, of collectors that, that will answer any questions that you have, should you have them. And But they don't price things for you. In order to price things, you have to look at what's selling. And that's you can do that on any big website, Mercari.com, eBay, Poshmark. Get a good idea of what your stuff goes for. Don't don't look at what is listed. Oftentimes, if somebody's going to list something, it may never sell. So how how do you know if it's actually worth that? But look at the sold li sold ratings. Get an idea for prices. And that'll help you so much in in deciding what how much to pay for a box, what you think you can actually flip for a profit, 
how long it how long it you um you'll have to hold on to that piece in order to sell it because a lot of my stuff it hangs for a long time it just chills out for a year no interest and but one I don't know one day eventually somebody wants it and they pick it up so think of it that way so a lot of it's some inventory management how much um how much are you paying for a square space uh, for a square foot of inventory either in a warehouse or in like a storage unit or in your house all this uh, all all the cost of storing it is, uh, adds up guys um you have to take that into account but also you really do want to buy in bulk people it really does cut down on shipping costs if you can buy like 50 pounds of silver plate or, or like an entire set instead of buying it like by the piece sometimes if you know what you're doing and you know that you found a, a really good gem go ahead and buy by the piece now that would be stupid if you didn't if you saw a piece you knew it was like a hundred dollars and they're only asking for like 25 or 30 dollars go ahead and buy it of course but but as a rule the um the cost of shipping per pound goes down the um if you buy it in bulk like 30 to 50 pounds might go for 30 to 50 dollars ground ground shipping but one pound through the post office two pounds three pounds in the post office will still cost you like 10 bucks so it gets very expensive and that's a very great great tip for if you want to go into flatware I wasn't even talking that much about flatware but flatware is kind of a different beast where mm, you, you just gotta know what pattern you're looking for and replacements.com is a great resource for, for uh, learning the patterns with flatware you got so many different patterns that some of them sell much better than other ones it looks like kind of like Inzico okay international silver company let's see flatware here yeah you got tons of flatware in, and um only some of the only some of the patterns make the bacon and you got to figure out which which of those patterns do look very modern here this is Leonard this is Leonard I was talking about Leonard earlier it's a good company I right, well this uh, ran long enough guys um, if you have any more feedback for me any ideas if I was not if I was unclear on anything go ahead and let me know or if you want me to go into further detail about a, a particular topic in this beginner's guide go let me know as well alright that's it for now good marks goods out